<laughs> All right, welcome everybody. Um, there's, this is an awesomeism chat, I guess is the best way to say it, but one of the things that, reasons we wanted to have this chat is that we hear all the time within awesomeism about all the amazing things that take place. Um, everybody's story is a little bit unique um, as to how they come into the process, what happens during the process. And so um, we decided that we'd start to record some of those call or some of those uh, situations so that you guys could hear about them, um, kind of a little bit of the outside looking into this particular process. So um, Sanwi um, and I had a private session. Um, it's been a little while now, a few weeks ago now. And during that private session, um, I'll let her kind of share what her uh, experience was and what she was asking about. Um, Terry is the facilitator for level one. And so it's kind of, we've been working this energy um, in a little bit of a triad here. And so we thought we would just share Sunwee's experience um, and fill it in a little bit and kind of go from there. So Sunwee, can you tell us a little bit about um, what happened and what your kind of original concern was? Mm -hmm. um, sure. Uh, at the time when I had a session with you, Susie, I was in, um, I think we were in about seven weeks of a uh, level one program. And one of the, my concern with Earl was um, that we go to uh, this park every day, almost every day when the weather permits and he just loves being on the swing. And we do that for like 30 minutes or longer. And uh, that swing, um, set is like looking down on the this really beautiful trail and there's a river flowing through and there's a bridge so every day I kind of want to go there I want to go for a walk with Earl but uh, Earl um, hasn't shown any interest as soon as he gets off the swing he turns around and pff, right back to the car and if I ask him like do you want to go for a walk it always is no like he's ready to get back so I was wondering why um, he didn't want to go for a walk and I thought it was because of his ankle issues maybe so when I asked Susie Susie said it's hard for him to imagine what's beyond the swing set and it's kind of unknown so he might be maybe nervous about unknown so Susie asked me to imagine it for him and share that image with Earl so uh, after the session the very next day that's what I did uh, when we were about done with the swing the swing was just slowing down so I closed my eyes and I imagined Earl like right on the bridge looking down at the water and really enjoying the whole experience um, and when I opened my eyes like Earl was kind of looking down to the side and smiling and he looked like he was like looking at something within him right uh, and when the swing stopped and he stood up and he just moved forward the parking lot is in the back and so I said uh, I asked Earl so do you want to go for a walk he said ah yeah that's like indication of yes and I asked him just um just out of curiosity uh, did you see the image in mommy's image and he said yeah oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it felt like he did it's not just the, uh, that exchange but while I was imagining it was very um experiential I mean not just uh, not just that I saw the image I felt like I was sharing it and I kind of felt a shift like maybe when he accessed it I don't know it was very I had didn't have experience before so it was hard for me to tell mm -hmm. but I could tell that it was more than just me imagining something in my head there was like more of a sharing experience so that that was something new and so we went, went down, we went down the trail, we went to the bridge and he stood like right where I imagined him and he looked down at the water 
And that was, yeah, it was a really beautiful experience. And when we were getting ready to leave, I, uh, I told Earl that how I enjoyed this experience. This was great. And he stopped and he turned around and when uh, took me to the other side of the bridge. And then he turned back. Uh, I think he just wanted to show me. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, we can do yeah. this, you know? And then we did that many times afterwards. I mean, uh, like pretty much like every time we go there, I still imagine. And then we go down to the bridge. Uh, so, yeah, it works every time. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. One, one of the things that I wanted to, the reason I wanted to have you share this story, too, is I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of children out there who are nonverbal or semi-verbal, who are, who are extremely visual. And you, in that private session, you happen to be somebody who, um, you're pretty visual yourself, I think. It's like you imagine very well. You know, it's like, especially something that you have kind of longed for. You know, you've really longed mm -hmm. to take that walk. So you've probably imagined it in your head even mm -hmm. without being as conscious of it. But the moment you applied the conscious imagination and you knew that you were doing that because that's kind of a place that Earl could connect with it's you know i i just i think that this particular um skill set is one that a lot of parents can actually use yes because i hear it all the time it's like i can't get my child to do this or or he gets stuck on this particular thing and can't move from it and i think a lot of it is is that once the children get stuck in something it's it's not so much them, but we can't imagine them doing anything else. We literally can't imagine them changing that. And unless we go back and actually imagine them changing it, we, you know, at that moment, we open up the space so that they can step into another reality. It's almost like, it's almost like creating another timeline or another reality, another potential. Mm -hmm. But we forget how powerful we are, too. We forget that we can create other potentials and other realities. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just apply to, you know, children diagnosed with autism and their parents. You know, it's like we can really uh, use these skill sets to um, invent whole new lives for ourselves. So. Mm -hmm. Um, Terry, you kind of had this, heard it from a, you know, you were hearing it as a facilitator of level one and things like that. Did you want to add anything else to Songwe's story from your vantage point? You know, nothing is just more joyful for me than to have someone come into one of these calls and, you know, share, you know, some new vivid experience, some realization that something's accessible to them or that there something's happened that's never happened before. And especially when it's between, you know, creates a new connection between parent and child. So that's one of the things that I love so much about yeah. awesomeism and level one specifically. I mean, this is why we spend eight weeks focused on multidimensional communication, you know, yeah specifically kind of telepathy but there's as someone was describing there's so many different um facets of that and really depends on the individual mastery and so we spend that first seven weeks um going through the material and talking about ourselves and the kids and pulling threads you know mm -hmm. pulling that mastery yeah. forward. and so Anyway, so I just, I loved that so I, mean, I couldn't wait to uh, spend some time with Susie and share with her. But, in, and when you came into that call, your excitement was so tangible. It's like <laughs> both Annie, you know, both of us on the call with you, we were able to just step right in there with you and share your joy. And so, yeah, thank you for being so generous and sharing this experience. I also think that the, you know, so often when you think about multidimensionality, um, it can seem like it's really out there. And I think sometimes with, with multidimensional information, it does pretty much stay out there. But I, one of the other things that I really love about this story, Sanwi, is that you took something that was, 
you know, kind of the gift that you have, your gift of visualization, and and which I would consider a multidimensional skill set, you know, and who knows where that skill set comes from, but to apply it to something right here on the ground, you know, so I think sometimes, you know, if we don't get anything else from this little clip or this little video, I think that it's really important for us to consider the fact that that there are ways in which we can support our the children in being here more fully and supporting the relationship between parent and child more fully. And more often than not, it takes a little bit of um, ingenuity. It takes a little bit of getting outside of the box mm -hmm. and creating from a different place, right? Because, um, you know, if, if just telling the child, go to the bridge, worked, you and Earl would have been on the bridge a long time ago, <laughs> you know? But, but that's, and yet all we had to do is kind of, pardon the pun, but bridge the gap between where you, where you function and where we all function as adults, human beings, and where the kids function at a more subtle level or a vibrational level. And every time we kind of create that little bit of a bridge, it does drop right down into the human experience and creates, you know, a greater expression of love or a greater exp expression of connection right here in our humanity. So, and that's where I think that we actually have to see the change, you know? Right, right. I wonder if I can share the photo on the Zoom. Please, yeah, if you can, that'd be great. Okay, let's see, let me open that. I love it. She's got much more techie skills than I have. So, yeah. yeah. She can there we go. There we go. Can you, do you see oh, it? Oh, yes, that's brilliant. Oh, God, I love it. Yeah. yeah. That is so, that's so amazing. So, <laughs> oh, that's so nice. I think that opened. Um, like more communication with Earl, right? Since I am uh, meeting him mm -hmm. uh, towards his way. And yesterday, when I was in the um, in the bathroom toilet trying to get Earl to go potty before bedtime, yeah. right? And he wasn't. He was ignoring me. He wasn't coming. And I'm like sitting in front of the toilet. Earl, come on, let's go pee before we go to sleep. And he like points to the shower, the like, walk-in shower, and, he's, uh, and then he looks at it. It's like it was unmistakable that he was looking. So I said, "Do you see someone in the shower?" He said, "Yes." Uh, so is it your um, one of your spirit guides? He said, "Yes." Like, okay, that's cool. And then he smiled. Right, and so um, in the past, he hasn't shared uh, things like that with me, but I think he's more comfortable sharing it now that uh, we opened up. And as and as there's a as there is a that's another kind of triangle. That's another kind of bridge because as he's sharing with you that world, you can start interfacing with that world to support him, or you. Can him how is that world supporting him does that make sense it's like mm -hmm. um, I'll give you an example it's like i used to work with a little um boy at his house it was when i was doing speech pathology and i would go to his house his mother would kind of shut us in his room and he had a diagnosis of autism his room was pretty barren there wasn't much in it except for his bed and a few toys and I would bring cards and different things that I was, you know, as in my speech pathology days, I'm trying to get him to do certain, you know, something specific. And so what was interesting is this, I would sit down on the floor with him and I would be showing him different animals, let's say, trying to get him to name animals. And he was, um, you know, wasn't interested, wasn't able to, or didn't appear to be able to do it. And all of a sudden, he would look up in the corner of his room, and he would go up on his bed, and he would jump on his bed, and he'd look in the corner of his room. And I, you know, 
I had the advantage of being able to see what was in the corner of the room. So I was like, you know, do you see something just like what you said? And he said, yes. And I said, well, come tell your friend, come have your friend come help you with what I'm asking you to do. And he jumped off the bed and he sat down and I turned the cards and he went cow, pig, dog, horse, you know. <laughs> so, so we, again, uh -huh, uh -huh. we have this, we have this idea that only, you know, solid human physical experience and expression can support these children. And that's not the case at all. They're being supported at the level where they're playing all the time. And once we begin to interface with where they play, they, I mean, talk about an invitation into their world, but we also invite their world into ours. So, and as we just start asking questions, just like you did, mm -hmm see something. Um, and the reason I brought that up is because you could probably even ask whatever is has come to support him, his guide, whatever, in the shower, to be supportive to him as you're trying to teach him toileting skills. Right? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I think that we have to teach those because those are the, that's the human part right? Mm -hmm. And we might have to teach the steps, or we might have to imagine the steps. Mm -hmm. The energy mm -hmm. that is supporting him in all those other realms can also support him in paying attention, in listening. Mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yes. Yes. So, uh, I have a quick question. So, I try to imagine imagining the scenario of um, nail clipping yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Earl, Earl did not come to me voluntarily <laughs> so um, so I can communicate with him that but he can still say no <laughs> was that the case he just didn't <laughs> well think about the two think about the difference between your capacity let's say to imagine walking on a beautiful bridge that you really want to cross mm -hmm. your son's nails mm -hmm. you know it's like, yeah exactly so the minute you kind of go oh that was like, yeah. I you yeah. know like we don't but the truth is is that we can we are we are powerful creators and we can imagine any scenario. You know, you literally can create the holographic space for that scenario. And my guess is, is if you approached nail clipping or you in the same way, if you have the same um, excitement, excitement. And you know what I would suggest, Sonwi, is imagine what it will feel like when you have when you've actually finished imagine when you can kind of go because it's not what we create i think that actually even gives us that that excitement i think it's that we create mm -hmm. it's like you know you can you can create earl walking on the bridge or you can create him doing something else that you know is beneficial for him to do but either one can give you that same excitement of oh my gosh i was able to visualize this and it happened right mm -hmm. so yeah if you play with it more from that vantage point my guess is it it'll show up that way too yeah okay okay yeah what a okay yeah i'll try that yeah anything else to add terry before we Oh, I just love the nail clipping thing and great suggestion, Susie, because I've had so, you know, many kids say I don't like to have my nails clipped, but my toes feel better when yeah. it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's the, and yeah, and I just love the conversation about applying um, kind of multi dimensional skill sets to something that is as practical as clipping nails, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. Sonny, thanks so much for sharing your 
story with us and your time. And um, I'm sure we'll be sharing a lot more of these as we kind of go forward. So my pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for letting me share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>